All right, so I've had a little bit of time to play the newly released Operation Harsh Doorstop, and it does some really cool things. It's got night maps, unlimited modding potential, pretty decent gunplay and weapon models, and of course, it's absolutely free. But there's something that could actually be a huge problem for this game, and I bet you can guess what that is. Cheaters. <laughs> That's right. Turns out when you release a game completely for free and provide the SDK framework for that game, Cheaters show up pretty quick, as they do in all games, of course. The biggest difference between this game and the other free games on the market, however, is this game doesn't have an anti-cheat installed directly into the software. There's nothing implemented here by default, and instead, the server owners are the ones expected to create their own anti-cheat for their servers. Now, Blue Drake has responded to this, actually, and he's talked about maybe implementing some sort of anti-cheat system, but We'll get to that in a second. Let's go over the game and how it runs and my initial thoughts with the gameplay experience. Now I will say, that is not the only problem with this game, of course. It is very early in development, so that's something to be considered for sure. And it is a completely free game, so keep all that in mind as I talk about this. Animations overall are pretty rough, and the gameplay itself is sort of meh. I jumped in as a solo player, attempting to see what the experience would be like for a casual guy like myself, and from my few hours of gameplay. 64 players does not work well. I was able to find a server with 32 players maximum, and that seemed to be the sweet spot. The other servers that I played on unfortunately left a lot to be desired. To me, it seemed like there were too many players in one small area, and nobody was able to push forward to the new objective, so it seemed like a lot of the combat was in one small area. The other thing I would say here is that it's a very bare-bones experience. It's not like Squad, it's more like an Insurgency Sandstorm style of gameplay. That's probably the easiest thing for me to compare it to, maybe a little bit more towards Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. It could also be the map design itself. There were some points that I could grab the sniper and overlook the entire next point, so that could influence that flow a little bit. But there were also a lot of empty buildings and the atmosphere of the game just wasn't there. I said this in my last video, the base game is pretty meh. It's a decent experience, I guess, if you want something to play, you want something completely free, and you want that multiplayer action. But the single player experience still leaves a lot to be desired. It's not something that I want to play every Every day or really ever in my opinion the bots still need a lot of work the mechanics in the game in general need a lot of work hopefully some destruction and some building comes in but the game right now is not that great but all those criticisms in themselves are not what worry me about this game those things can be adjusted with time and the game is very very early in development but I think what's really cool about the entire system the way this game is being developed is that if someone adds something to the game in a mod format and the developers really like it, they may pull them into the development team to continue to create and flesh out that mod and add more features like that to the game. In a way, if you're an aspiring developer or wanna start developing that portfolio for the future, this seems like a good way to do it. So the idea is certainly there, great for developers and modders and the community all together, a very unique and I think positive way to create and develop a game. With that said, there's another issue here as well. There is not a good way to implement the modding experience right now. Yes, the game does have Steam Workshop support and mods are playable, but in the main UI of the game, there's no way for me to know which mods I need for each server, like this here. I can see here that they're playing the King of the Hill style mod, and it tells me here in the server name to download that mod, but there is no external information for me to know which mod is going to be on this server. If I find a server with a little mod on the side, and somehow the developer hasn't shown people what it is, or they haven't put it into the name, there's no way for me to know what mods I'm going to need for that server, so I just can't join it. And that's a very poor modding experience. Sure, the game is infinitely moddable, but if I can't tell which mods I need, I can't play it. Which makes me wonder here how long the game is going to be populated. If people grow tired of the core experience like this and these features aren't implemented pretty quickly, how long can the development team of this game continue under that donation system? If they can't play the game the way that they expect it to play, why would they stick around? There are also plenty of free options out there, games like Warzone. I can play that experience for free as well. Why wouldn't I play that? Which this, of course, is not helped by the blatant cheating already in the game. So let's take a look at what Blue Drake had to say. My buddy Moidog mentioned the lack of anti-cheat, and Blue Drake responded. He mentioned that he feels the anti-cheats of today have really been rendered useless because all the cheaters have essentially overcome those obstacles in other games, and he feels the admin-created scripting is a better solution, which apparently Arma does this as well. I don't play Arma, but apparently those admins create their own anti-cheat. He also briefly mentions that Easy Anti-Cheat only recently went free, and had they implemented it during the development, it would have been an expense that was impossible to manage. I personally don't know much about that side of things, but if that's the case, okay. 
And I'm not going to fault the game because, again, it's completely free. You don't have to play it if you don't want to, and it doesn't affect you at all. But my concern here is with the general premise. Communities like Arma are very passionate about the projects they're creating, and because of that, they're willing to go that extra mile for that project. Arma has a huge fan base, so they're willing to put in the time and the effort to make that experience enjoyable for themselves and others. Here, however, this hasn't developed that huge fan base yet. This game is a very small game, even though it has loads of potential, but what kind of passion do the players have right now? Is someone going to want to put a ton of time into modding this game if nobody's going to play it? If nobody's going to see their mods, if nobody's going to enjoy what they're creating, why would they keep creating it? And just in the base experience, if I'm going to spend my time getting flanked by some cheater all the time, I'm out. There's just no reason for me to play the game. So there's a chance here that this could definitely make the project fizzle out in terms of the main development. The game itself is basically out already, so technically the game can't just go away. I mean, everything is there. There's no way to officially kill this game and remove it from the Steam Store, I guess. But continued development on the core gameplay may be at risk. So there you go. There are some of my thoughts on OHD, a mad game with a huge vision that I find very respectable, but I do see a lot of hurdles along the way. But then again, that's how game development goes, isn't it? Let me know what you think about the project down below. Have you had fun with this game? What has been your experience? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, subscribe for more, and until the next one, be bold, be courageous, stay tactical.